What's up everybody? Jason over to Venture Ready Off Grid. Put the KRX out for a little fun today. Don't mind the background noise. We are right next to the Highway 15. So if I look at this direction, you see snow in the background. You're like, man, what a beautiful setting. I look over here, Southern California traffic right there. So there you go. Anyway, um, I never did a review on some of the sets we put on here. So hopefully the sound isn't too bad, but I'll kind of go over a few things that we put on this uh, KRX and give some feedback. Um, we had had the uh, PRP nets on there. Um, some people mentioned that in areas that you get a lot of mud, it'd be hard to have these because they will cake full of mud and you can't see. They're even hard to see just without a cake full of mud, so I totally understand that. I agree with that 100%. Um, we're out in dusty conditions. Um, when it rains in the desert, we get out there immediately, but normally there's some dusty conditions out here, so um, it doesn't end up having to stick to it. But these are a little bit of a distraction visually. I don't know if you had like custom made ones that went up here and just had the nets would be better. I think a lot of strapping stuff, although it's not super thick, I think it distorts your vision a little bit. But um, I do like having for rollovers. I've had friends that have had rolled their vehicles over and I think uh, they would love to have those. Some of them have lost their arms and things like that. So pretty serious. Assault mirrors, um, just basic mirrors. This is just what was in stock. I didn't quickly chase this brand down. I don't know anything about it, uh, but they work great. So um, once we adjusted them and tightened everything down in here, when I first had them on, I guess they didn't tighten up and they were just kind of bounced around a bit. But once I adjusted right here, they stay really well. Don't provide the, the best background visual. I pr probably, I'd probably prefer a rear view mirror mounted mid center there, but I have the tire carry up there. I'll go over in a second that doesn't allow that. So salt mirror is great. Um, I went with the OEM Kawasaki. Um, um, front uh, ARM car guards here and they're great um, it was missing some componentry when I got mine which I thought was kind of weird it actually was missing some bolts and, and whatnot so it just was bizarre that just had a few things that weren't in the kit so easy to go get the materials at you know a Home Depot or McFadden Hills so not a big deal but um, yeah it was missing some actual parts from the kit but I like the fit and finish very simple um, just a couple of four little straps in here or little, you know tabs basically hold it onto the Arm itself, so and they seem to be doing their job just fine. Um, rear radius uh, arm, same thing, went with the Kawasaki brand, so it's right there. Boom. Uh, this as well I was missing some componentry, so I don't know um, why that was or why I got a couple. You know, I was missing a couple bolts from both kits. Um, componentry on the Kawasaki is one thing I've never cared for on their motorcycles, and I can say the same for the KRX. Some of these bolts, even though they should be like hand tight, the guy in the video like literally like touches this with his finger and it comes off. Um, mine was not the case. Uh, most of the bolts I picked, pulled off of this thing from the radiator, I mean, sorry, <laughs> the radius arm cover bolts that I had to reuse to the rear frame bolts for like the Tusk uh, tailgate were like on there like nobody's business. So I, I wasn't really impressed with that. Um, and the componentry, even all the way down to the bolts in here to hold on the little back attachment sections were very tight and they were not the best componentry they're like a summer fill up summer a hex head summer whatever i mean anyway i just never been i've never been a fan of kawasaki componentry and i'm going to say that i'm still not a fan of kawasaki componentry love the vehicle love the build but um i don't use a phillips head screwdriver bit on anything moving forward please <laughs> don't gorilla grip everything that's on there from the manufacturer to where you have to like wallow it out just to get it out so only gripe right there is pretty much componentry otherwise this machine is ridiculous so high lift jack um i had originally bought a tusk jack um one of those like kind of like um scissors type jacks i don't know what those are designed for uh tusk seems to make some really good parts for these things for all utv so i was really impressed with some of their componentry some of their you know some of their designs some of their, their, their materials they had available some of the products they had available the scissor jack from tusk with a really stupid <laughs> kind of cheap looking holder that they have I see them on other ones, ATV, uh, UTVs. I'm assuming, assuming they've never used it because you could fold that thing in half, like if you fart wrong. So, not a fan of the Tusk Scissor Jack. So I went with this High Lift Jack. I just put this on. It's brand new. Um, it's the it's a UTV version. I really don't see a huge difference between the ones I've bought for my Jeeps in the past and the UTV model. Um, it's shorter. You can get like a 36 maybe and a 42. Um, so I didn't want a huge, huge jack, but I wanted enough to clear, get this thing off the ground. It sits pretty high off the ground, so if you have too small of a jack, then you're not going to really get clearance if you want to get your tire off the ground. When you start lifting this thing, I mean, of course, the shock wants to drop out too, so depending on what point you lift it at. 
So anyway, haven't used this, um, but I like the concept and I'm very familiar with these. So I've used them on my Jeeps and my truck builds in the past. So I just went all out with that. Um, this is a, I think a JK um, mount from one of my old Jeeps. Um, I just used and took back out. Um, the reason I use this is I like it. it has this like kind of an angled approach right here. So it actually comes out, you can see right there. And I was able to push this away as you can see from the tire and the fire extinguisher and it seemed to make more sense. So I don't know if it's specifically, I think it's specifically a JK. It may be a TJ2, but basically the JK, we had a four door and way the roll bar came down behind the seat. This was designed to go on the roll bar behind the back seat of the JK and hold your jack inside the vehicle if you wanted to rather than having it outside. So I have another style, um, high, it's a high lift brand, high lift brand mount as well. I have another one that just goes straight up. Very simple in design. I just liked, I'll show you from the back. I just liked how this made some more clearance back here, kept it in line with the frame and didn't interfere with you know getting your tire off and getting to the fire extinguisher quickly, you know, things like that. I just I want to leave the configuration out, you know, a little wider. So going on to the tusk right here, the rear tailgate, super awesome. I mean, probably the nicest one I've seen in the market, super clean. You got a bunch of tie down points here if you want to tie things down. Like if you want to, I have a little net in here, we have a little ice chest is what I don't have today. But I like how this opens this up. It will fit the full size spare. So this could have just sat right there. Um, I wanted it up and out of the way and I wanted to use this for tools and, um, and an ice chest. We're not doing anything far. We're literally like right next to the truck and just putting around here today just for fun, just to, well, just to, just to get out of the house. Um, so we didn't bring all the tools and all the ice chests. We're literally five feet from the, from the trailer. So um, tailgate's awesome though, like I said. One thing I did not like, it's not nothing to do with tusk, componentry right here. This, I had one of these bolts that was so hard to get out from the first time. I mean, like it's never been touched ever by anyone besides a factory mechanic or, you know, assembler. And I had a hell of a time getting this thing, one of these two out. And when I got, went to go get it back, of course, when you take these out to put this on, this frame is, is such a, it was at such tension that it was actually pushing over. So I had to like pull it back into place to basically hook that back on. So I wasn't super fond of that. Um, not like the end of the world, but once again, componentry. I mean, the threads felt like I was ripping them in half just getting this thing out, let alone putting it back in. So that was a little bit of a worry for me, a little concerning. Um, you know, not the end of the world, but like just, you know, like I said, the composure has never been blowing me away on, a, on any Kawasaki product. So, Tusk Tailgate, awesome. Um, not sure what brand this is. Let's poke it in here. R1 Industries. I literally just Googled this thing and pulled it up. I've ran these before on Jeeps and loved them. I couldn't remember what brand I ran, so I just I had to go look at something. To, I would just go you know, basic Google, you know, quick release, roll bar mount, extinguisher. So um, it straps here. I put a little bit of tape on here just to not mess up the frame or the, you know, the roll bar too bad. A couple of hose clamps comes with it, straps this thing down. You got a quick release pull right here. Boom, you pull it. This thing notches up and, and out of the notch right here, and you got your fire extinguisher very quickly. Um, might even think about putting one of these inside the cockpit on our next UTV. Um, we're not going to be keeping this super long. We're, we're going to go back up to a four-seater. I wish Kawasaki had a four-seater available right now. I would, even with a componentry grape, I would buy theirs over anyone else on the market, like sight unseen today. Um, I've heard they're coming out with one next year. I don't know if that's just all rumor mill, but the... The cockpit size in this thing, the how robust everything, I mean, all the radius arms and trailing arms and, and A arms, I mean, this thing is just built like a brick shit house. I'm super, super satisfied and blown away with the build quality on the KRX. If they had a four seater, I would buy one tomorrow. Um, if they don't have one soon, I'm gonna buy a different brand and I'm gonna regret it, but that's just how it goes. Uh, we can't wait forever for the manufacturers to catch up. They're five years behind. So Anyway, um, what going on here, we did buy the full-size spare. I think you can only buy this spare rim with this tire, which is fine. That tire goes with everything else. I would never put these tires on a vehicle of mine. I'm just not, you know, I guess if you're mud bogging or maybe rock climbing, I'm not sure what these are best for. Um, I would definitely go with even a mud terrain, but if I went with a mud terrain, it'd be obviously you know, maybe a, a Toyo mud terrain or something, just something a little bit different. Even a Maxxis, but just not this pokey crawler, whatever thing this is. I'm sure it's great for someone's um, uh, geography, just not for Southern California desert. So um, I'm, I think, I'm not sure if it's a mud tire or a rock tire. I think I mentioned that in one of my videos before, but anyhow, just not a, not a fan of this tire. And the thing that's horrible or kind of sucks, when you want to buy this rim to match, from what I can tell or what I was told, you can only buy it with this tire already on it. So I would have much rather have gone with an all-terrain on that. Just bought the rim by itself, put an all-terrain tire, and I probably would have motivated me to swap these tires out too. Um, rigid, everyone knows Rigid, so, um, or sorry, not Rigid, Rotopax. Uh, Rotopax, everyone knows this brand. Um, 
I didn't know this brand five seconds ago. Anyway, Rotopax. I've used it on many things from adventure bikes to Jeeps or whatever. They're not cheap. Uh, it's a ton of money to carry a little bit of gas. Um, that's that kind of gripe. You know, get a jerry can for five bucks down at the local Harbor Freight. Uh, so this is not your best direction financially, but I like the fact it's got a lock on here. It's very, very sanitary as far as design. It's, you know, it can fit almost anywhere. Put it here, you put it on the outside of the frame, put it up higher from the back, whatever you want to do, very simply. Um, I don't know this brand. I'm going to figure this out in a second here so I can plug them a little bit. I mean, I don't get anything from these things, but um, I'm thinking like Action or Axion or something like that. I'll have to figure it out. But anyway, this brand is carried pretty popular for the UTVs right now. I'm sure everyone knows the brand. Um, I don't know the brand, but I found these guys, and I like the fact that you can just pick up the clamps, pick up whatever configuration you want, and make, you know, a tire carrier, uh, whatever, uh, the, the rotor packs whatever fit onto your UTV pretty simply. So so I, I, I can't remember, I think it's Axion or Action, but anyway, so I'll have to plug that in the comments if you, if you care. Uh, but yeah, super happy with this clamp. I haven't even put gas in this thing yet. I just so I wanted to have it on there if we did some trips. And like I said, we're going a different direction. We're gonna sell this and we're gonna go with a four seat of some form. Like I said, I prefer to be a Kawasaki four seater. I'd buy one in a half a heartbeat, but if they don't have something available, I'm gonna buy another brand most likely. So um, Tusk uh, tire uh, carrier right here. I tried to order the one from Kawasaki. They've been backed up for a long time. Um, so the rear bumper, front bumper, I tried to order, not available either. Tried to order their tire carrier, and I think it has like a little lift thing up here, which seemed pretty cool. Not necessary. This Tusk one is significantly cheaper, um, significantly more basic, but really robust. You got a mounting point here, mounting point here. Comes with this thing loose, loose, loose. So you go, you, you got a little wrenching here, a little wrenching here, wrenching here. Put the, the, uh, the bar in place. It's really robust, really well made. See it underneath here, so it just goes across below here. The tire mounts, I think it's got maybe four points maybe that go through, I can't recall if it's two or four. I think I only got two in there. You can see in the video maybe. Anyway, super robust, very well made. Um, like I said, I, I don't know anything about Tusk other than that they're big in the UTV uh, industry. So I kind of went with that and I've been, other than maybe a little slag on, you know, the little, the, the, the little cutout here, which I could care less about. Um, really well made products from what I can tell and like I said I really like this tailgate and really like that tire mount and you can see right here plenty of room um, we have a pretty good size ice chest that goes in there um, I have a, a little like a, one of those Harbor Freight you know um, gun gun case type things tool case and I put stuff inside there and uh, mount it all back in there and it works really well so um, going here um, the uh, PR, PRP that's uh, I have their bags in here I have their nets I bought this bag first before I got the Tusk um, tire mount. One thing I wasn't too, super excited about was this right here. You can't use this mount when you have the Tusk thing on here. I asked the, one of the gals out with the show, Sandsport Super Show, said, hey, what do you guys do with that rear thing? And she goes, oh, everyone just cuts it off. <laughs> so not a big deal. It doesn't really make it go anywhere else. It just doesn't look super, you know, if you're OCD like me, <laughs> it doesn't look on right. So this thing could be right here. If I could actually sew, I'd sew it right back on here and put it up right in front here. I'm sure that's available. I guess you could. But anyway, happy with this case. I keep like the basic first aid stuff. I have some rags in here, whatever else from the other day. Uh, some maps. I mean, I just keep it kind of full of just random stuff that I would use basically while I'm out using the, using the UTV. So um, behind here, I did go with the um, PRP rear. Let me see if I can get this to go forward rear bag so you can kind of see in here guys they make a nice bag that mounts in one two three points and it's got zippers and whatnot some nets back in here so you can put some maps things like that or maybe some flip flops so you're gonna go uh drive this around and get out and play some water um anyway that's a little back for the high lift jack my base but I have, a, I have the bag on that side, the bag on this side. Just use the OEM uh, componentry. Once again, one of these was so damn tight, like I could barely get it out without, even on the impact, without um, basically just you know, blowing this whole entire, uh, this this uh, this uh, Phillips head um, indention out. I mean, I almost stripped it. So I was going, okay, guys, how tight does this thing have to be? So uh, I'm not sure why it's that tight. Um, I ran it out numerous places on the KRX. Uh, if you're not familiar, behind here, it's where your air filter is, so you have to pull this off. These two tabs right here access your air filter. It's pretty easy, but when you put something in front of it, it's going to be a little bit harder. You can flip this up, but this area is a little bit tight. You know, when you're trying to work in there, some people pull their seats up. It's a little bit crazy, um, but yeah. So that's kind of just a breakdown. We had the roof on it when we got it. That's the Kawasaki, one of the roof configurations they offer. Just kind of straps in place, but it makes a big difference. I wouldn't run these without a roof. It's just nice not to have the sun beating you up all day. 
But yeah, I just want to do a little rundown, guys. Um, if you have questions and comments, throw them in there. Um, Performance-wise, blown away with this thing. Super fun. We're running just like Jeep trails out here, hauling ass, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour down like little trails. 74 is top speed, at least that's what I hit on the highway. Out in Arizona, I can rip this down the highway um, on those goofy tires right there. But I, I think 74 was the max, and I might have been past the governor, I'm not sure. I was going on a downhill on an open highway, ripping to Ace Hardware to go buy some Torx bits. So anyway, 74 is top speed, uh, non-turbo obviously. There are turbo kits for this. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not a glamorous guy. I'm not a sand guy. I'm not a drag race guy. Um, I do use the highways in this because uh, the street legal and you know, we, we have a place out in Arizona we're working on, so that's been pretty cool. So I guess a little more speed wouldn't hurt, but the turbo thing I, isn't really my big my, my thing. I have it on all my trucks. I have it on my diesel pusher. Um, I know turbos aren't cheap. Adding more turbos to my maintenance my maintenance uh, uh, schedule isn't going to help anything. So, but performance wise, guys, blown away by this thing. Hardly touched the clickers. The kids drive it at breakneck speeds. I do. We do uh, Jeep trails. We do you know a little bit of desert. We do a little bit of uh, mountain climbing stuff, and everything's been really fun. So I can't complain there. Everything so far has performed well. We're under a thousand miles still, so I can't say I put a ton of miles on this thing. Obviously, later on down the road, you might run into other issues mechanically. There's a lot of videos out there that will discuss that. So far, all the ones I, I watched before buying this were all very positive. So, but yeah, great performance, super fun. Um, not the best resale, guys. I have this advertised right now, and I hadn't got a lot of love. Uh, the Razors are still the popular item. Um, the Can-Ams are real popular, too. Uh, the Talons kind of not so much. The Articat's not so much. This will probably be higher than them. But I think the Kawasaki's really, really undiscovered. I don't think people recognize um, how nice it is, how well it's built. Um, mine a couple of bolts. But it's how comfortable it is in, in the cockpit and the driving situation there and just how robust it is. Um, I'm assuming when they have their four-seater come out, um, four-seater turbo I've rumored as well, but even just a four-seater in general, let alone a four-seater turbo, I think you'll see these more as more valuable because people that don't want the four-seater will go, oh, you know, I'm going to go pick up a used uh, KRX from two years ago, a year ago, and they might might see this market value kind of come up on this thing randomly because people are more into the vehicle. Um, like I said, I don't think it's the most um, uh, promoted or marketed uh, vehicle, and it's only a couple years in the making, so it's just it's behind the trend right now, but I tell you, for the money, really, really happy with uh, the performance. Um, the idea was to buy a second one of these. You see if the kids liked it and buy a second one and keep me on a dirt bike. But I'm going to get off the dirt bike, um, change things up a little bit, and I think we're going to do a four-seater. I would go buy another two-seater. Um, it's just I don't think I want to spend another 20 grand right now, have this and another you know, brand new payment or a big chunk of change coming out of the bank account. So I think we're going to get rid of this and a few toys and go four-seater for now. Uh, that way we can rip down the highway together, me and my kids, and we can go explore together. We'll probably camp out of a, out of a four-seater um, or maybe even buy something like a general, a little more utility-based that I can use around our property, plus go camping, plus go exploring, that kind of thing. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm sorry about the background noise. Like I said, I'm next to the freeway. Just thought I'd do a quick review before we, we're putting this up for sale. So it may be gone, but within the week, from what it sounds like, people are already interested, but uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted there too. But yeah, if you have any questions on the accessories, let me know, or performance. I said don't have a ton of miles on this thing, but um, definitely understand the mechanical aptitude. And like I said, it's a, it's a great buy if you're comfortable just having a two-seater only, if you don't want a turbo, and you don't want to resell it real quick because it's not going to have the best resell between the other, market, uh, the, other, the other items in the market because it's not as popular. But like I said, if you're trying to buy it and keep hold of it, you want to do Jeep stuff, Glamis, desert, mountains, all of the above. I think this is the best all around the Swiss Army knife, you know, the most versatile two-seater on the market, in my opinion. All right, guys, stay safe out there. Don't talk to strangers. Well, well you can, I guess, if you want to.